welcome back to my channel. I am back in my car. <laughs> I was working tonight and I got out a little bit earlier and I had a couple of ideas today that I wanted to share with you guys. The ideas that I wanted to share with you guys are my experience with um, having my degree and my next steps and actually not yet applying but acquiring about a job in the mental health field. So if you're interested in this topic, please stick around. Um, you can always find me on Instagram at KD Counseling. Um, I love posting stuff on there. I like to chat with my followers on there. So just um, find me at KD Counseling. Okay, so I wanted to come on here today and do more like a easy chit chat video because why do we all go to school? We go to school so one day we can venture off and either leave the industry we're in and pursue a career or independently um, start your own business but sometimes you know you do have to have that schooling and supervision uh, for you to attain your dreams of being an entrepreneur and doing it on your own. So in my experience and in my three plus years that I've been doing my undergrad I have slowly been doing a couple of things to kind of bring awareness to what I need to be doing once I graduate and my goals and what I'm going to do moving forward. Um, as all you guys know, or and if you don't, you can check out all of my videos. I am in a master's program for clinical mental health counseling, and that is amazing and I'm super excited about it, but I do have an undergrad degree with a specialty in substance abuse. And my undergrad was a Bachelor of Science in Applied Psychology, and I did get, I think it's 36 credit hours, that once you work at a facility, I, I, I don't know exactly the hours, but here in the state of Florida, you get a CAP certification, I think I mentioned this, or a MCAP certification if, you're, um, if you graduate from a master's program. So there will be places where you can start doing group therapy, you can start being in the environment, you can start doing, um, working with clients with a bachelor's degree, and even if you're not in a master's program. But I found this facility, specific facility that I want to talk about today as an example because I found it on, um, I always have like my ZipRecruiter and my Indeed, and I forget the third one. I have to look and see what I have on there. But I always have it set for bachelor degrees in my zip code or master's degrees in, in my zip code in like psychology. So it kind of narrows down the search. And I just see the places that are employing in my area. And you know, you set the radius for whatever, 15, 20 miles, whatever you're comfortable with traveling. And you start there. And I've been doing that for a while and I've been taking screenshots of different places, placing, you know, ads like we're hiring. If the place is hiring, then they will, you know, say the qualifications that you need. So the three levels of hiring for our degrees or a licensed clinical mental health counselor or a, um, a psychology major would be, so there's three areas that I found that people are um, accepting applications and the different kinds of jobs or career fields you can get into. The first one is on a bachelor's level and most of the time the bachelor's degree is um, required and then they want you, usually when you get the job, to get different certifications. So if you're at a substance abuse clinic, they want you to get certified in that. If you're in um, crisis intervention, they want you to know what's going on there. So you're gonna have to learn a little bit more about exactly who you're working for, but you can definitely do that with a um, bachelor's degree and go from there. Then I saw the post that I'm talking about right now, it was a post for master's degree level students that have done about 24 hours of credits that are ready for supervision. And it was a private company, it's not like federally or state ran, so I thought that was pretty interesting because a lot of the facilities that are state ran or federally ran, they have specific schedules that you have to follow and I'm still in school and I work part-time right now because it's off-season, 
but I don't wanna go somewhere Monday through Friday, sit in an office for that kind of salary. That does not work for my lifestyle right now and I would just prefer to keep it as is so I can pay for my school and my bills and everything, but I also do wanna get my you know foot in the door. So the second thing available for people with even the bachelor's degree is doing the counseling and things like that. But eventually, if you're in the master's program, you're gonna be able to do your hours there if you want. So that's kind of my goal is to, my goal is to go in there, see how it is, see if I like that type of environment, and then probably in the next semester or two, whenever I get 24 credits, maybe I can do my internship there. And just to let you guys know, they pay about 20 to $25 an hour for certain, I think you have to have like an initial internship that is not paid for, I think, for the school. But to get your hours when you're a registered clinical mental health intern, once you have your master's degree, they pay that and that's just on paper and there's probably other benefits and things like that. So it's always good to do your research before. And before I start rambling on, my point here is, is just turn on those notifications. See what's available in your area. Because in the three years, I saw jobs from Miami. There was big companies contracting out for like the local places in Naples. And there's just so many opportunities. And like the threshold to get employed is that degree that you already have. If you're here listening to me, you're probably in a master's program. If not, you're looking to be in a master's program. And if you're not in the master's program, you probably have your bachelor's. And on top of all this, there was a lot of things in there that said even having your associates with a lot of um, hours and experience is equal to the same thing. So you can always be in this field and grow in this field. So lastly, what I wanted to add is that you can see what you ultimately can make, where you can ultimately work, and what it's like to be a licensed clinical mental health counselor. I was really surprised about the different job offerings that all on, like if you look on the websites, they all start at least at $80,000 a year. I saw a job, um, I'm in Southwest Florida, I saw a job in Tampa with, um, it's like, right out of school, like I'm not saying no experience, you have experience by then. I saw a job posted in Tampa for like 120K a year for a licensed clinical mental health counselor. So your goals are attainable, they're achievable, and whatever you set your mind to, you you can get it done. Just keep doing your research, keep doing you know school or whatever you're passionate about, and it will happen. Just make sure you know what's going on because what I've learned is Nobody's gonna do this for you. Nobody's gonna reach out and write emails for you. Nobody is going to get you a job. You have to do this yourself. It's up to you. So I hope this helped. You guys, please, in the comments, let me know what you're studying and how it's going, okay? You guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.